That was awful. One of the worst losses I've ever seen as a Habs fan, and um, I guess we have to talk about it. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome to this Game Reaction Edition of Habs Digest. I'm your host, Josh Goss, alongside my co-host, Jesse Poirier. And quickly, before we get into this disgusting game reaction, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like all, like our videos, comment in the comments. I mean, it helps us out a lot in the algorithm. We love your guys' support, uh, especially after a night like this. We need it. Jesse, that was, like I said in the intro, maybe not even, like, if not our worst loss this season, one of the worst losses I've ever seen just from an effort perspective from the Habs. I mean, tell me what you're thinking. Well, as friend of the show, Ron Burgundy would say, that was rough. <laughs> you know, <laughs> really didn't have our best game tonight. You know, the big guns and uh, Alexander Barkov, you know, the star uh, center for the Florida Panthers came through big as well as Matthew Kachuk, you know, with, Barkov getting three goals, uh, Kachuk with two. But on the positive side, um, our power play was a little bit better. And I kind of liked how our lines were made up a little bit more. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's what I got right now. Yeah, it's, it's something to grab onto. <laughs> something at all. I mean, it just felt like early on in this game, I actually had written here, it was like deja vu, right? It was another quite, I mean, it wasn't, the goalie wasn't, or the goal wasn't as early as last game, but it was another early goal given up. And it's just like, when that happens to Montreal, earlier in the season, I had faith in them to bounce back quickly on the next shift and it didn't really happen. What kept happening was turnovers coming out of our own end and you can really, really see the young defensemen in these last few games. I mean, Justin Barron's trying his best, but boy, uh, his defensive partners and even himself, they're not doing each other any favors. Then we got, uh, we took a penalty after a ton of turnovers, giving Florida chances. We went down 2 nothing. Power play was pretty crap, and I remember at one point Gallagher got a high stick right to the face when we were on the power play, and no call at all. Luckily, Jack I managed to score right after uh, the power play ended, which is awesome to see. You know, we were talking about who should be on that power play. Jack I seems to be the man, but we gave up a hat trick to one player in the first period. Second period, we hardly get any shots. Third period was one of the most disastrous periods of hockey I've ever seen Montreal play, and a lot of that had to do with the penalties were taken. How much of this can we really blame on the players for lack of discipline, lack of effort? How, like, I know, Jesse, we've been huge proponents of Coach Marty, and we love the coaching staff, we love the front office, but... At this point now, like, it's not even just a coaching thing. Like, we have some some players on the, on the ice that are just not showing enough skill. But, like, how much can we blame the players for this huge lack of discipline and even lack of effort? Or does some of that come back to the coaches? It has to go both ways, you know. And I know uh, some people didn't like our spicy take from the other day just saying Marty St. Louis in hot water. And we didn't mean, like, okay, is he going to get fired because – we know he's in a rebuild, but, like, it's just we're taking too many penalties, right? And it doesn't matter what sport you're playing, you know? It could be football. It could be hockey. It could be golf. Like, no, well, not golf, but, like, <laughs> how many penalties you get matters. Like, it's on the coach, right? And, again, even tonight we're taking a too many uh, men on the ice penalty. And we actually should have got called for maybe even more than one, yep. you know? Because, and that ultimately does fall on the coach. I think he's a great head coach, but we need to really figure this out. Like, I'm sure that Kent Hughes, that Jeff Gordon, has had this conversation with Marty St. Louis at this point in time. Is How can we stop from taking so many penalties? Because we're, you know, even though the score is 7-2, you know, it's like we're hanging around, right? You know, we're getting scored. They get the two-goal lead. But then twice in this game where we score to kind of get in within one, within yeah. striking yeah. distance. But then... We start taking penalties, you know, one, two, we're not expecting to like go the whole game, never take any sort of penalties at all. You know, that's not going to happen. But when we start taking, you know, the five, six in that sort of territory, that's just too many penalties. And if that does kind of fall on the coaching a little bit. It does a little bit. It also falls on the players. Jesse, I got some stats here. This is coming into this game tonight. This isn't after the game. I haven't checked. Some of these are probably worse. Coming into tonight's game, we had the worst power play in the NHL. The sixth most shots against per game. We had the fourth most penalty minutes, and that might have even shot up a spot after tonight. We're bottom 10 in goals against per game, which is definitely shot up after giving up seven goals tonight. And we were fifth worst in goals four per game. So bottom five in goals four, penalty minutes. We had the worst power play and shots against per game. The, a lot of that, like, you know, they'll go oh, bad defense, bad defense, but some of those are offensive stats. Like, we're not scoring. We have the worst power play in the National Hockey League. 
Like, I know for a while I was saying, hey, we don't have the personnel. But we have some guys who should be producing more now on the power play. We have Suzuki and Caulfield on the first power play, along with Kirby Doc, who's shown to be a great playmaker. But that first power play tonight looked like trash. And the second power play is actually the one that got us our one power play goal and our one, like, half power play goal when Jack Eye scored from the point. That point shot was a weird little passing play between um, Jack Eye and Drew Ann. There, there was a three man pass back to Jack Eye for a beautiful bar down point shot. And then on the second power play, it was Josh Anderson, who, by the way, I think has some of the best zone entries. I know where our power play scheme, you pass it back to the quarterback and they run in basically from their own blue line. Anderson, I thought, did a better job than Suzuki every single time he got that opportunity to do the zone entry tonight. Every time Anderson was bringing it into the offensive zone on the power play, it felt like we could get set up and do some work. And guess what? Anderson got a great goal off a nice rebound off of Hoffman, what felt like his 10th one-timer of the power play. But hey, he was getting him to the net. They were good shots. And he's another guy who maybe could get rolling. It was also nice to see Galley back on the power play. But uh, so yeah, we got a power play goal tonight which is nice for us doesn't really help our power play because we still didn't score on the double minor and a couple others but our penalty kill i think is the big thing like we said i mean taking these unnecessary penalties is killing us and early in the season we were talking about how good our penalty kill looked now to be fair we're missing some guys like like david savard who was t second in the nhl in block shots he's not there right now and he's a huge difference maker for this team, honestly, it's kind of weird to say, but I feel like when he comes back healthy, we're going to see a little bit of a different team. But anyway, he's not the sole reason for, for the problems, but he's not there. And I think our Pabasu tweeted was something like over our last 13 games, maybe 10 or 13 games, Montreal has a 56% penalty kill rate. That is awful. It is worse than the NHL. We are awful on the penalty kill right now after starting off the season so strong. Um... And taking these penalties is killing us. So it's it's discipline, it's some coaching, it's inexperience on the blue line. Do you think it's going to make much of a difference when the guys like Savard and Monaghan get back? Or Because to me, it just feels like these guys are starting to look like they're giving up, as much as I hate to say it. It's going to help a lot, because as much as having a lot of these young rookie defensemen, they've kind of overachieved. Because yeah. often it's not good to ask like this much of them. But they've shown they can handle it, but you don't want to kind of put too much, right? As the season starts to go on, as we start to get to the halfway point, we're definitely going to want to be able to offer them, you know, whatever type of relief we can. That being said, you know, a really big positive to take away from tonight's game is, you know, even though we do have that inexperience, one place that you would like to have a lot of prospects um, on your team is on defense. Because that's really like the foundation of your team, along with the goaltending. So that being said, even though tonight's game wasn't pretty, is we are setting ourselves up for the future. We have to remember we have five rookie defensemen. I mean, and, you know, that's that's huge, you know, but we are, we're kind of, uh, you know, laying some bricks for the future, you know, definitely. And, you know, I think the future is going to be really bright because we got prospects where it matters at forward position, but on defense, we're really strong. So I think we're really as I said, just building a really strong strong foundation for this team moving forward. And hopefully that foundation, at least in the short term, will include Caden Gooley, who went down with an injury and left the game late in this one. There were some, even a ref got hurt in this game. There was a scrap at the end where Gallagher went after, I think it was Brandon Montour in the corner. Edmondson had a bad cross check on Gudis, was given a 10 in the game. Um, it was just all over the place. This third period was chaotic to watch, but at the end of it, yeah, Edmondson gets kicked out, but I'm worried about Gooley. Uh, we don't know, at least not as of the recording of this video, the extent of his injury. We can only help he's going to you know, only pray that he's going to be healthy because without Gooley, without Savar, without Matheson, boy, this decor looks rough. I mean, who's next to call up? Do we play Weidman? Do we call up Corey Schooneman again? I'm not even sure. It's looking rough. Uh, the situation's already bad, and it looks like it's going to get worse. Um, so anyway, hopefully he'll be healthy. I guess the final question to ask Jesse is like, I'm seeing a lot of fans. I made a video yesterday after our game. I said, no, it's not time to tank yet. And I still don't think it is. And I know you don't think it is. We got this brand new tank animation. Brian, bring it up late in the video. I'm seeing a lot of Habs fans jumping on this tank train right now. Even in the comments of the last video, even in the, like the game thread on Reddit tonight was awful. Filled with people saying, all right, it's all right. We'll get Bedard. It's all right. We're just going to, we can finally start sliding down for Bedard. 
I, I'm still of the opinion that winning games and trying to win these games, putting out the best product you possibly can on the ice, is what you need to do. Um, and I think you're of the same mind about that, right? Yeah, it is. You know, I think that you want to keep um, just a winning, um, you know, sort of culture, even though you're rebuilding and not winning every night, just the fact that you're just bringing forth um, that effort. You know, we just know some teams that have kind of been in that slump for a long time of losing of just how really uh, just so detrimental that can be to your locker room. I think one of the best things is just we're just upbeat, you know, um, we knew we wouldn't have the best team, but we knew we'd be competitive. So I think that that's, you know, just what we need to do is, you know, of course we have a young team. We're not going to win all of our games, but as long as we stay competitive, um, I don't think it's time to uh, to start tanking or anything like that. I think the way that they made this team this year, though, is we knew, okay, we weren't shooting for the stars. I think financially and strategically that, that was wise. You know, let's, let's bide our time. Um, you know, we're, we're building on something and, and that definitely takes a little bit of preparation and we're just in the midst of that right now. Um, you know, so I think we just need to be patient. I think so too. I think the pieces are in the right places. I'm happy with the young core we have. Yes, the performance right now is lacking, but don't forget we're lacking a lot of good talent on this team that made a huge difference early in the year. I think once we get some uh, Matheson Monaghan back in the lineup every single night and we don't have to rely on some of these fourth line grinders and young defensemen that we that we are right now, um, I think this team will turn around at least a little bit. I think we'll start seeing a few more wins than we are right now and we'll stop hanging our goalies out to dry so much. Um, I'm excited for the future. Who knows what's going to happen this season. We'll be here for all of it. Everything Habs will be on this channel, especially as we go into the new year, head towards the trade deadline, and even as we finish up the World Juniors where some Habs prospects are doing great, we have coverage on everything Montreal. So if you enjoy these videos, make sure to subscribe, like the video here, comment, check out our channel. Um, we love your guys' support, and we hope it continues long, long into the future. That'll do it for this Game Reaction edition of Habs Digest. I'm your host, Josh Goss. For my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.